Coming up on the Total TV Network, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll be glad you're alive. It's a brand new episode of On The Air. Today we'll be asking, can you be a Christian without being weird? You're not going to want to miss this one, so stay tuned. You're watching the Total TV Network. And this is Tommy. That is so weird. Wow. Well, define weird. Um, not being normal like you. So individuality is weird? Yeah, I mean, no. I, I like who you are and what you stand for, but sometimes you are just so, you know. Oh, that was beautiful. I'll get real. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is what you were doing, it was pretty bad, Tommy. <laughs> then what's a good weird? Well, you'll find out when we talk about being a Christian. And then you can fix what you were doing. How do you think the world views Christians? On the air is gonna find out. Come on. Some push you too much, and they say that they know everything, and really they don't. Some people think we're annoying because we're always trying to witness to them. A lot of times, uh, Christian teenagers, sometimes they're hypocrites. They say one thing to me, and yet they go off and do stuff. It seems like any, any Christian in the news or anywhere is a radical, usually right-wing, Christian. Trying to be a Christian there and play sports and keep your grace up, you were kind of considered as a nerd and an outcast. Persecution from people, they make fun of you, you know, you're a pansy, you don't do whatever and drink your drugs. They call me church boy and stuff like that. I think an outsider would say that a Christian is maybe boring. Like all we do is go to church. And all we do is pray and have no fun. I don't really think of it as being like weird or anything. I'm a Christian teenager, I think I'm pretty normal, I, I hope I am. How would you like to get caught in a brainstorm? <laughs> oh! What is this? Excuse me, but have you lost your mind? You know what we need? Chocolate? A lunch break. <laughs> well, that too, but uh... I was thinking more like a, a marketing agency. Why? Well, isn't it obvious? Christians sometimes have a problem with their image, and you know, people always think we're so... Weird? Yeah. So you're saying we need a public relations campaign. Exactly, and come up with things like, Christians can be cool. And we can put yeah. ads on buses. And some commercials on MTV. Yeah, and, and we even need a slogan like, Christianity, it's better than pizza, but it has fewer calories. Huh, okay. Because I was valedictorian of my senior class, um, I was told that I would be allowed to give a speech at graduation. My principal said I specifically can't mention the word God or Jesus or Christ, and she pointed out in, in the policy, you know, where supposedly it said that I couldn't, couldn't give the speech. When I left her office, I mean, I was in tears. I was very upset. At one point, I was thinking, okay, you know, I could just water it down, take out the words that she said, you know, put instead of saying the word God, say a higher being, like she suggested. Me, on my own, that would have probably been what I would have done. But the Holy Spirit was, you know, convicting me within because that is not my personality at all. So we called um, an attorney, Greg Gorman. I wanted it to be her decision and, and not, not anyone else's. I guess I just, I had to stop and think, first of all, why did I, you know, what is my purpose in giving this speech? Violate your constitutional rights. My purpose was to share what Christ has meant to me because, you know, he has been my inspiration. The thing that concerned me most was a misunderstanding behind student religious speech. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. A, a, a school principal, because of, in his official capacity, may be prohibited from getting up and talking about his 
particular beliefs because of the official position he holds, but that in no way prohibits a, a student who is merely attending the school from talking about their own religious beliefs. But no matter where we go or what we do, we must be willing to stand strong and make a difference in our world. But I believe that as young men and women created by God, we are called to love others as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. Shannon was going against the system. Is that weird? Well, I think she was just acting like herself. I don't think it was weird. Sometimes when you are yourself, people think you're weird. For example? Well, last Saturday night there was this huge party that everybody was invited to for my school and all my friends and everything. Yeah. But you know, I didn't want to go because that's just not me. So I went to this activity with yeah, my you youth group over church. Being yourself, right? Yeah, but people still thought I was weird. Just because you wanted to go to church and not get smashed? Well, you know how it is when you just say no, then people from most schools think you're weird. Yeah, I guess you just wanted everybody to think you were normal, right? That's what I thought. Yeah. What is weird? Thinking something came from nothing. Yeah, two really big rocks collided, and now we've got skyscrapers, individualized fingerprints, the, the human, human brain. brain. No way. God has made himself known. So you think that you came from nothing and are going nowhere? Hey. That is weird. And that's the word on the street. That's Terrence Maiden over there, my identical twin. He pushed me to go to church a lot when I wanted to. I think they'll describe him as quiet, uh, Christian, an athlete. He would push me to go to Sunday school, push me to go to church, push me to go to choir rehearsal. I look at him more as my best friend than as a twin brother. We set a goal for ourselves, that's to go to a Division I school, so that kind of pushed us into working hard and trying to achieve our goals. I think we made our parents real proud by getting a scholarship for four years to a good school. People really dog us about why we don't go to party with them, why we don't hang out with them. You know, it's a lot of times that you be tempted to do things, you know, and that's where you have to be strong. We know who the, who the people to hang out with and who not to hang out with, so we try to stay away from people who are going to be a bad influence on us. It takes guts to be a Christian. It really does. It takes serious guts to be a Christian. So I tell my kids, hey, you're going to be bad? Be bad for Jesus. One time he was asked to lead the prayer, and we was up at the Atlanta Bank, and he was praying on and on and on, and everybody was looking around and laughing, and we got back to the table, they called him Reverend Maiden Preacher Boy. <laughs> so we just laughed at that for a while. Being a Christian means to me loving people, loving little kids, changing people's hearts, and not doing anything bad to others. It just changed my life like nothing before, and it, and it helped me go through school uh, differently, have a smile on my face. I kind of thought that, you know, Christianity was going to be uh, smooth and you're not going to have that much problems. And all of a sudden, you know, all these problems started coming to me. The hardest struggle is the lust and, and the temptations of asking this girl out just to go sleep with her. I have a couple of friends at my school that they're saying, man, you, you don't sleep with girls? And I say, you know what, man? That's, that's junk to me because that's not fun. That, that's just lust. They just sometimes laugh at me, but I just go on through the day and do what I have to do because I don't want to please them. You know, I want to please the Lord. And that's when I have to pray and I have to say, God, help me. God, you know, I need your help. There was a time when they did see me struggle. And they said, man, I thought you were a Christian. And I was like, you know, in my heart, I am. And what I do, I am. The way I walk, I am. But there's sometimes I fall and I stumble. But God lifts me back up. I can't give it up because God is the only one that's helping me out right now. You're on the mic with Mike. Mike, how can I help my friend find God? Well, first, you tie him up to a pole. Then you drive a speeding car mm, directly at him. <laughs> You'll find God soon enough. You're really weird. You're on the mic with Mike. 
to Wendy's the other day and it said drive through window? <laughs> so it did. <laughs> that hamburger or fries cost me 500 bucks. Now it's your turn. Yes, once again, it's time to stop the tape. But don't worry, we'll be back. And I know you'll miss us terribly. <laughs> Honey, it's such sweet sorrow. Oh, Tommy, you can't take him anywhere. So here's what you guys should talk about while we're gone. So you guys have heard from Shannon, Terrence, Tim, and Andy. So number one, why are Christians seen as weird? And number two, some people thought that Shannon was weird. What do you think? <laughs> That's not even good acting. Brought to you by Graven Images, the makers of the Jesus beard. When they look at you, they'll see him. Having a tough time with your witness? Want people to see your walk with Christ? Then you need the Jesus beard. Just put it on and you'll be amazed how differently people look at you. Our beards look so authentic because we've patterned them after actual pictures of Jesus as seen in the Bible. Whether you're playing ball, shopping, or on a date, your face says it all. So don't be another face in the crowd, get the Jesus Beard. And new from Graven Images, they're Saints Halo and Paul's Chains. Available in stores everywhere. This is your brain. This is an egg. This is broccoli, carrots, tomatoes, pretzels, squash, cookies. Hey, life's weird. Christianity's not. A message from the Total TV Network. We're back. Um, you guys were just discussing the things that... Disgusting. You were just disgusting. <laughs> no, Tommy, disgusting. No, oh, never mind. You guys were just discussing how hard it is to be a Christian teenager. But we know it's not easy. And that's why it's time to get some expert advice from someone who's known for their wisdom. Why, thank you. <laughs> no, Tommy, not you. Neil. Oh, he's back again? Yes. We're here to introduce the star of stage and screen, well, screen anyway, Neil McClendon. Go get him, Neil! <laughs> You ever sing along with the radio when you're in the car by yourself? I mean, you, you kind of nod your head to the beat? You ever start swaying back and forth and, I mean, really getting into it, just kind of letting the music just kind of take you? You got your own little groove going, and you don't have a care in the great wide world. And then, the car pulls up next to you. I mean, what are they thinking? You see, they don't hear any music. They just see this crazy person jumping around and swaying and nodding and bobbing like he just really had bad pizza or something. Weird. That's what they're saying. But if they were in the car with you, you see, if they heard the music that you hear, they'd be jumping around with you. But they don't hear it. So they think you're weird. And that's the way it is with Christianity, isn't it? You see, it might sound kind of strange when other people see us bowing our head to pray for our food or, or carrying a Bible or giving some of our hard-earned money to help other people. But they're not hearing the music we're hearing. If they knew of Christ and His cross and if they had experienced the love of those people at church, man, if they'd ever read the Bible for themselves and seen what an incredibly amazing book it really is, then maybe our behavior wouldn't seem so weird to them. Hang on a second. I love this song. Hey, if you're gonna talk the talk, you've gotta walk the walk. But how easy is it being a Christian teenager? It's like an everyday struggle for me, you know. I have to admit it, you know. I sometimes am not the perfect Christian little girl. When you hang around non-Christian friends, it's, it's really difficult. Everybody has a bad day. And so if you fly off the handle and get mad or if you get frustrated or down yourself or selfish or whatever, everybody goes, man, look at, you know, I mean, they point the finger at you. And so it's real hard to, to be a light all the time. It's not easy being a teenager and a Christian. I act 
better in church than I do out here because I'm in church and I have to. Like some people, they go out and they minister to their friends. They say, are you Christian? I tried that routine and my friends were like, are you trying to throw God on me? Sometimes like when you're around your friends and like they act a certain way and you kind of still want to blend in, but in a way you don't want to get dragged down into what they're doing. Like Friday night, my best friend just want me to go out and drink with them and party and I just, I don't want to be a part of that, you know? Ruin my, I don't ruin your life. I just try to be a good example to my friends that they, they know that you can have a good time without, you know, being bad or doing bad things. As Christians, we have just as much fun as anyone else and we can remember what, what we did when we had fun. Are Christians different? Absolutely. You see, the Apostle Paul, he wrote this way. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, when we get to know Christ, God changes us. But do Christians have to be weird? I, I don't think so. You see, some people live with the idea that this change happens from the outside in. So when you become a Christian, you, you suddenly, you, you have to start carrying the Bible everywhere you go. And not just a Bible, a big Bible. Like the nine pound family Bible your grandma has on her coffee table. And, and preferably red. You can't look cool anymore. Your hairstyle has to be five years out of date at least. And your clothing, something you got at Greg Brady's garage sale. Not quite in fashion, okay? And not only that, but now, you're the moral cop for everyone. You never have any fun. And not only that, but you don't want anyone else to have any fun either. You see, and you have this odd way of turning any conversation into something religious. I mean, you're at the football game. Yeah, sure, our, our football team's getting clobbered, but that's nothing compared to the way sin will clobber your soul. You see, that's the idea some people have of what it means to be a Christian. Let me tell you right now, that's wrong. You, you know what it means to be transformed by Jesus Christ? It, it, it means, well, it means first of all that we're willing to honor Christ with our lives. We know that our bodies are temples of God's Spirit, so we'll, we'll just be careful with what we do with them. Others may think we're weird for not going out and having sex, or doing drugs, or getting drunk. So what? It means also that we're eager to serve God. We know God has a purpose for our lives. Do you hear that? We know that God has a purpose for our lives. And that's the way we want to go. Let everyone else run after money or popularity or whatever they want to pursue. But we'll put God at the center of our plans. It also means that we're in touch with what the Bible teaches. No, you don't need to go to the swim party with your special little waterproof Bible under your arm. But we do consider the Bible important in our lives. And the reason we do is because it's one of the ways that God speaks to us. Now we're not talking a list of rules and regulations here, but we're talking a book that tells you who you are. It also means that we're ready to love other people. You see, when we're mistreated, we'll love our enemies. We'll go the extra mile when we have to to help a friend. And we'll reach out to those who are, well, they're, they're hard to love. And the outcasts and the unpopular students, maybe we'll be the one our classmates call when they need someone to really talk to. Finally, it means that we're determined to stand up for what's right. We don't have to judge everyone around us, but you do need to have the courage to stand up for what you believe. This is the kind of life God wants us to, to, us to live. Not an outside-in lifestyle where we're like trying to be a nerd. That's not what we're talking about here at all. But an inside-out life where we're transformed by the living God. We're willing and eager and in touch ready and determined. Now, would you call that weird? Whoops. Hang on a second. Can, 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 we, can we move this right here? Can, can we move it? Just take this eager thing down here and, and that, yeah. See? Now, I, I, I may not be weird, but I'm wired. That's more like it. <laughs> Why does God put all these pressures on me? And I mean, if he loves me, why does he do all this?
my mom and all that and my aunts and stuff. It's kind of hard to see them doing drugs and stuff. And I know I'm not supposed to have it, but you know, people are like always pressuring me. And one thing that's helped me is um, in James, it's consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And it says perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It seems backwards that the, I would be trying to teach my parents and I mean all the people older than me, they know I'm a Christian and they, I mean they look at me and think I'm supposed to do everything right and I try to do everything right to set an example for everybody else in my house. It's kind of hard but I mean I just keep my head in the Word and don't let anything bring me down. It will get hard. I mean, it, when you accept Christ, it's not like everything's gonna be like gold. But if you like stick to it and try your best at being a Christian, I mean, you can make it. I mean, just try to live by God's word. Shaitha is a great example of, of wired, and, and she's in a tough situation. So where do people get the idea that Christians are weird? You would think that people would be actually attracted to the qualities that Jesus gives us. I mean, you got love, joy, peace, and sometimes they are. But a lot of times, we don't show these qualities. Sometimes we forget what Christianity is all about. If you read the Bible with fresh eyes, you discover something really amazing. Jesus loved parties. Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. You heard me correctly. Jesus loved parties. For example, what did he do his first miracle? Do you remember? At a wedding reception in the town of Cana. I mean, Jesus told stories about the kingdom of God. And often he said this, he said, the kingdom of God is like a feast. What's a feast? You know what a feast is? I tell you what a feast is. A feast is a party with napkins. I mean, so you get it? The kingdom of God is like a party. So what kind of people does that make us? It makes us party people. It makes us fun people. Rejoice, says the Apostle Paul. And again, I say, rejoice even more. You see, Jesus said he came so we could have life, capital L. That's a full life as we can stand. I know you want to be normal, whatever that is. I mean, I know, and you're tempted to make some compromises just so you can fit in. But try this. Instead of going along with the destructive patterns of your friends, grab a hold of the good qualities of Christ. I mean, really love others with his love. Experience the joy that He brings and, and, and trust in Him in the, in the midst of the tough times. I mean, really trust in Him. Maybe. Then your friends won't say, this, 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 hey, that person's really weird. But maybe this person's really wired. Wired with the same kind of power that we want in our lives. Thank you very much. Can you be a Christian without being weird? Just ask Tommy. Let's not. Well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by weird. Well, as Neil was saying, um, you don't have to carry around a big Bible all the time. Um, you don't have to use religious words all the time. Or pester people. Right. I mean, some people may just think he's a little different. Or a lot different. <laughs> Willing to honor Christ, eager to serve God, in touch with the Bible, ready to serve others, and... Uh, it begins with a D. Dorky? No. Yeah, determined to stand up for what's right. God was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> I mean, some people may think we're different, but in reality, we just march to the beat of a different drummer. Mm -hmm. Or in Tommy's case, a whole band. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to them, folks. I am the only truly sane one here. Oh, oh yeah, right. Please. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of On the Air. You say some of your kids don't have Bibles? Just give us a call here at 1-800-274-4824, and you can order either the Teen Study Bible or the Student Study Bible at special ministry prices. See you next week right here on the Total TV Network.